Foundations of chromatography includes uh, includes some physical science, which is important and maybe interesting. One of the fundamental concepts is that, using our example, is that the stars, the big stars, the little stars, and the disks do not interact. They do not see each other. The second assumption is that, in the interaction with the stationary phase. The stars and the disks do not compete with each other, so that it's like the stars act independently. Every molecule acts independently of every other molecule. And then another foundation of chromatography is that you don't know what it is you're analyzing for. We have big stars, little stars, and disks, but the reality, of course, is that you do not normally know that. I want to extend our, the, the example with the trough that was made with SketchUp. I want to extend that example and, and kind of flesh it out a little bit. And we'll, we'll go through it fairly quickly. We're back with the, with the model that we had. Please recall that there is a layer of water flowing gently through the column. The analytes, which is the disks, bump along through the column and take from 10 to 20 minutes to go through. We are dropping them in, not knowing what they are, and we're dropping them in one at a time. So we pick one up at random, set a clock, notice the clock, whatever, and uh, when they come out, we mark the time and put a spot on the graph. And then we do that again. Pick up a Pick up an unknown piece, notice the question mark, drop it in the water, it bumps along, bumps along according to time. We watch the time, we watch the time, we watch the time. And when it's done, we mark the time. This is handled this way because I want to really emphasize that the fundamental characteristic of chromatography is that the analytes behave independently. That's the whole idea of it. The analytes behave independently. So we speed it up a little bit, get our graph populated, and uh, shouldn't take too long. This is like hours are going by, hours are going by. The passage of time is something that I never really understood as a new chemistry student looking at chromatography. To be a chromatographer, patience is a good characteristic. Okay, and then uh, coming to the end now, pick up the last couple of um, unknowns, drop them in the water, they bump along, the, the, clock is, the clock is set, timing, timing, timing. Last one is uh, looks like 13, 13, a little bit more minutes. Put a spot in. Next one, drop an unknown in. Set the clock. 20 minutes goes by. 15 minutes goes by. How about nine minutes goes by? Okay. Pick up one more. Drop it in. Bumps along, bumps along. Time goes by, time goes by, time goes by, time goes by. Again, I, th I think that when I was a new chemistry student, I never really understood that a typical chromatography run takes 10 minutes, 20 minutes, hour, or something. Long so time. we've been running these things, unknown, one at a time. And we've been doing them 15 minutes at a time for a long time. We've been running these for a long time. This is what we have produced. So what is this? What does this mean? Well, looking at them, I think you could see fairly quickly that there's three things. What are those three things? We really don't know. This is applicable to the real world of chemistry. 
we don't know what these things are, but we have ideas and we have guesses. And we're going to move on those guesses. This is very much like the real world of chromatography. So we say, well, I think some of these are small disks. So we take some small disks and we drop them in the trough and we set a stopwatch and we find the small disks come out here. So we go, oh, these look like small disks. And then we say, well, okay, let's try some small stars. So we drop some small stars in. The small stars come out here. So we say, these are small stars. And then we conclude by saying, these are big stars. So we know, that we, know we have three different things. We know where the disks are, we know where the big stars are, and we know where the small stars are. A couple of other points. We dropped 50 things exactly into the trough, and we have exactly 50 spots. There's no black hole inside the column. You don't get something out that didn't go in. You don't put something in that doesn't come out. It's kind of an important concept, is that there's no um, conservation of mass. You put it in, it's going to come out, period. And then the last point is that these curves are a result of random behavior, and they are regular bell curves. They're regular, standard, ordinary statistical bell curves. The idea of a bell curve is kind of like the idea of a parabola, for those of you that have studied math. A parabola is it's a mathematical concept that describes actually a lot of different shapes. Well, a bell, bell curve could have a lot of different shapes as well, but these are standard bell curves. I worked in chromatography for very, very many years in many different capacities, and the reality of chromatography is that you get bell curves. The curves typically come out perfect. And um, so I want to end where, where, where I started. People that work in chemistry are often working in chromatography. Chromatography is very much of an art in this, is very much of an art form, more than a science. And um, it's interesting. It's an interesting field. And that's it, and thank you for your time.